The X-Ray Atlas is a premium electric skateboard, boasting more features than I've ever before seen on any consumer board. But is it the right board for you? I hope that by the end of this review, you'll have all the information which you need to make that decision. Roll the intro. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. I am so excited to be bringing you this video right now. Today, after 100 miles riding this board, I'm bringing you my detailed and comprehensive Atlas review. But before we get into it, if you're new around here, my name is Amar and I'm an electric skateboarder and content creator based in the UK. My goal for this channel is to be a resource for electric skateboarders through reviews, tutorials and ride videos. So if any of that interests you, smash that subscribe button and join me on this journey. Just to preface this video, with the Atlas four-wheel drive two-in-one, one, you essentially have four distinct boards. Four-wheel drive AT and street and two-wheel drive AT and street. You have the two-wheel drive as you can easily disable the front drivetrain from the remote and that can really help to maximize your range. But for the purposes of this video, I'll be focusing only on the Atlas in four-wheel drive configuration. I know that Daniel Kwan is working on a huge video to reveal the Atlas's performance in two-wheel drive, so I really don't want to ruin that anticipation. I'll reveal my own two-wheel drive testing results in a future video. As I mentioned before, the Atlas boasts an insane amount of features for a consumer board and it's the most modular electric scale skateboard on the market currently. That means that there's so much ground for me to cover today and naturally this video is going to be a really long one. So to help you navigate this review I've split it into chapters and left you some timestamps in the description which you're free to use. That said let's crack on with the review starting off with performance. <laughs> So kicking things off with the performance, the Atlas four-wheel drive boasts very impressive performance in most departments. In order to give you a good and honest understanding of the board, we tested each spec four times, twice with six inch AT wheels, with a 75 kilogram rider and a 120 kilogram rider, and twice with the stock 90 millimeter wheels, again with a 75 kilogram rider and a 120 kilogram rider. All tests were done with the stock pulleys, and that's 56T for the six inch ATs and 36T for the 90 millimeter wheels. Starting off with the top speed, in our testing, it was abundantly clear that X-Ways claim top speed of 51 kilometers per hour or 31 miles per hour on AT and 46 kilometers per hour or 28 miles per hour with street were easily achievable. With ATs, we were hitting 29 to 30 miles per hour with room to spare on the remote, which for me was a completely thrilling experience because I'm used to topping out at 22 miles per hour. With streets, again, no issue at all with the top end. Harvey actually reached the ridiculous speed of 38 miles per hour, but I think he achieved that on a decent downhill stretch. To be completely honest with the speed, as you chew through the battery, you can expect to lose one to two miles per hour on that top end. Moving on to the torque, and my God, I've never before ridden a board with as much acceleration as this beast. And I've ridden dozens and dozens of boards. 
Putting the thrill and the traction aside, the biggest real world benefit of this talk for me is riding on the roads in traffic. Being able to keep up with traffic and overtake slower vehicles has massively increased my safety and confidence when riding on the road. So far, I haven't had impatient cars blast past me because I was riding so slow. I've been able to maintain the speed of other vehicles on all the roads which I ride on, and I think that's the way forward for safe riding in traffic. With me being 120 kilos, I don't think anyone riding the Atlas will ever have complaints about the torque, especially considering that the average rider weighs far less than me. Currently, not only is my board using older firmware which provides less power output, but also my pre-production model is using 4230 motors. And even with that, I'm yet to encounter any hill which the Atlas won't eat for breakfast. The production Atlas boards will all ship with newer, more powerful firmware, as well as larger 4240 motors, which produce a total power output of 3024 watts. That's twice as powerful as the Atlas two-wheel drive and four times as powerful as the X-Way Flex Riot. If you're thinking that these motors are still small, here's a comparison chart showing their power in comparison to 5330 motors. You can see that the difference is negligible, and that's because X-Way measure the stratus size from the inside of the motor, and my DIY friends tell me that's how it should be measured. Whereas other brands such as Evolve include the outside can in the measurement too. The torque on the Atlas in gear four is amazing, but if you want even more torque, you can go into the X-Way Smart app and enable the turbo mode indefinitely to unleash all of the board's potential. Now to put into perspective the torque with the four wheel drive, here's a video taken by Antonio from X-Way Europe, where he went from naught to 31 miles per hour in three seconds. Yeah, you heard that right, three seconds. <laughs> By the way, Antonio was using 105mm cloud wheels with 44T gears. In sum, you won't have any complaints whatsoever about the power on the Atlas. Next, let's talk about range. But first, a quick rundown on the battery X-Way are using with the Atlas. It uses Samsung 30Q cells in a 12S 4P configuration, and it's rated at 518 watt hours. The battery has a high 120 amps of maximum discharge, meaning that it should remain cool even under heavy load, and that will help it to survive a very long time. Like previous X-Way batteries, this battery is smart, meaning that it will automatically discharge itself to a safe level for storage. The charger for the battery is four amps, and it will charge your Atlas in roughly about three and a half hours. Now I should caveat all the range results we got by saying that our tests were performed in fairly cold weather, between seven and 10 degrees Celsius. It's no secret that you can get more range out of your board in warmer temperatures. I should also add that we hammered the board in the tests. There was no point in the rides where we rode slower than we would usually ride. And in fact, for the street wheels tests, we rode quicker than usual because it was getting really dark and cold. We also ended the rides at around 8 to 10% battery because realistically we wouldn't want to ride that slowly and probably you wouldn't either. Let's start with the six inch urban tires on the four wheel drive Atlas. And we tested these riding on normal streets. X-Ray claimed 27 kilometers or 16.7 miles. My friend Harvey weighs 75 kilograms with a bag and he got 24 kilometers or 15 miles and he was riding in gears three and four. The rideable range which I got at 120 kilos was 20 kilometers or 12.5 miles and that's fast riding in gear three. And comparatively, that's about the same as I got with my GTR with seven inch tires in the equivalent pro mode. I've seen that Nate from Eastgate Hub actually got more range on his seven inch AT test versus six inch. So I'm super curious to see how much further I can go with the Atlas on seven inch tires. Moving on to street wheels and X-Ray claim 42 kilometers or 26 miles with the stock 90 millimeter wheels. In terms of what we were able to achieve, Harvey got 20 miles or 32 kilometers and that was very fast riding in gears three and four. At my weight, I was able to get 16.5 miles or 26.5 kilometers. Again, that's fast riding in gears three and four with a good amount of inclines. Now some might be a little or disappointed with the range which we were able to get, so it's worth looking at the broader picture here. I think that if you're a lighter rider for a four-wheel drive board, the range is great. 
perhaps at my weight I would personally want more range from the board but I'm going to be honest I never expected to get an enormous amount of range with a four-wheel drive AT board. Also I didn't expect to get near the advertised figures as they were reached with a 80 kilogram rider on a flat road in gear two at a steady speed. Also four-wheel drive sucks out so much power and increases the weight of the board. So if you really want to have the most range possible and sacrifice some power, the two-wheel drive Atlas is probably going to be the better option for you. For me though, I'll choose the power all day long. If you're riding with ATs and want to maximize your range and not give up too much comfort, you can purchase the 115mm honeycomb rubber wheels from the X-Ray website. I've heard great things about these wheels and I'm super curious to test them out. The other alternative to maximize range is to just turn off the front drivetrain from the remote when you're going for a quick ride. And only activate the four wheel drive for when you really want that performance boost. In my experience though, I've got to be honest, once you've experienced four wheel drive, you don't want to go back. I also want to compare the range to the only other four wheel drive board which I've ridden, that being the Baja board. Even though that board easily costs double what the Atlas does, the range on it is only about 12 miles taking it fast and 15 to 20 miles taking it easy. That just goes to show how much range can suffer with an ultra powerful board, despite the battery. By the way, it is possible to carry a second battery to switch out on a long ride, but it's not really recommended, especially considering you'll have 18 screws to undo and then a battery cover. So it'll just be a really tedious task. X-Ray have said that they may release a bigger battery at some point in the future if their customers really want that, but I can't see them personally releasing a bigger battery anytime soon. Also, consider that a bigger battery will make the Atlas heavier and more expensive. So it's all about trade-offs and striking the right balance here. The braking is extremely responsive, but at the same time, very smooth. Strong braking is so important, especially when riding in traffic, where practically every car and vehicle around you is a potential deadly hazard. The Atlas, especially with four wheel drive, can bring you to a stop in an instant if you want it to, but without throwing you off the board. Note though that because of the braking force, you will need to subconsciously prepare to brake and sort of lean back a little bit more than you would on a two wheel drive board. By the way guys, quick side note, if you're riding at night like I am in this clip, make sure you're lit up for your own safety. I'm using the Shredlight SL1000 here and I highly recommend them. Someone asked in my last video how the board performed braking on a steep downhill. And I have to say it performs brilliantly, especially with the free mode turned on from the app, which will essentially allow you to come to a complete stop even on a steep downhill. This is a great feature for stopping at red traffic lights on a downhill road without having to dismount the board. The Atlas uses X-Way's new 9.5 inch double kingpin Trist trucks. If you've always hated DKP trucks, fear not, because as well as being massively stable, these trucks are carvy and maneuverable at the same time. X-Ray have achieved that through a combination of using cup washers and only full-sized barrel bushings rather than barrels and cones, as you see with many other DKP trucks. The bushings are 94A in durometer, and in our testing, they were great for both light and heavy riders. Having ridden this board to around 30 miles per hour multiple times, I have to take my hat off to X-Ray here. The trucks really feel amazing to carve with, but are also extremely stable at speed. I've been riding DKP trucks for more than four years, and I've never before felt as stable with them as I have with the Atlas. I honestly think that double barrel bushings are a game changer. In terms of the deck, the Atlas is using a stiff carbon fiber deck. I found the deck to be super wide and very comfortable to stand on. And the three people who have tried my board so far all feel the same way. There's a nice subtle drop down on either end of the deck, as well as a gradual W concave across the whole deck. With it being a carbon deck, you will of course feel more road vibrations than a flexible deck. And after Harvey's 20 mile range test, he did have really sore feet. Although he hasn't been riding street boards for a while. Despite that, the stock shock absorbing grip tape does do a great job of providing that extra little bit of comfort during the ride. And for a carbon deck, I think it's essential. As someone who's ridden a carbon board for two years, I found that you get used to the vibrations and sort of build a tolerance to them over time. 
If you're using AT tires, you won't have any complaints about the vibrations anyway. Ultimately, I think for a board capable of the speeds which the Atlas does, a firm deck is essential and offers an enormous amount of stability. The last thing you want is to be riding at full speed, then hit a slight change in the road surface and have your deck wobble up and down. I've had that on my boosted V2 and it wasn't a fun experience. The 2-in-1 Atlas comes with 6-inch urban tyres and 90mm by 64mm 78A street wheels. But you can purchase 7-inch tyres or another 11 types of street wheels directly from the X-Way website. If you've never ridden pneumatic airfield tyres before, you will fall in love with the 6-inch AT tyres. They crush every surface you can encounter on a street or pavement. You literally won't feel cobblestones, uneven road surfaces, potholes, ground indications for blind people, they will roll over anything and give you a super comfortable and forgiving ride. They're also brilliant for night riding because they're so safe. They can do grass, but I would recommend these seven inch off-road tires for grass. And they do handle dirt trails like a charm. X-Ray's new 90 millimeter street wheels, which come stock with the two-in-one kit, are really nice wheels. Because they are super wide, they feel extremely stable and grippy, but are also a dream to carve on. You can carve quite aggressively without worrying that they will slide out and cause you to fall. I do want to test these wheels some more to see how they fare over time before I comment any further. So the Atlas boasts a water resistance rating of IP55 and if you get caught out in the rain whilst riding you'll be totally fine to ride home without any issues. The battery enclosure is sealed with waterproof strips and the ESC is glued with a water resistant material. However for your own safety and also for the sake of preserving your board's condition especially the wheel and motor bearings you should avoid riding in the rain as far as is possible. Also water damage is not covered under the warranty so you do carry that risk by yourself. I actually really like the remote. Physically, it's the exact same remote as you'll find on previous X-Way boards. A really simple design with just one button and one scroll wheel. It feels really ergonomic and comfortable in the hand, and I usually ride with protective gloves and haven't had any issues at all with the thumb scroll wheel. The remote is very responsive and has a good amount of play for the acceleration and braking, so you can get really smooth control of your board's power. That's quite important with the speeds that this board can reach. I've never had any connection issues whatsoever with the app or the flex board either using this remote. One thing I really love about the remote is the standby feature where the remote turns on your board automatically. You don't need to bend down and turn on your board because that's disgusting and I hate that. You also get a small screen with a remote which displays your riding mode, the board's battery percentage, the remote's battery percentage and also your speed. And you can adjust various settings using the remote too. The remote charges with micro USB and it dropped by 17% on one full ride with straight wheels. So you can expect to charge your board five times before you charge your remote. As I mentioned before, the Atlas is the most modular electric skateboard on the market currently. You can change up the pulleys to adjust the gearing and adjust the performance on the board whilst using these same Riot motors. You'll also be able to switch out to a completely different drivetrain if you want to, including direct drive and hub motor drivetrains. On top of that, you'll be able to mix and match the drivetrains, so you can have direct drive at the back and hub at the front, Riot drive at the back and direct at the front, all direct drive if you want a super side ride, all hub drive, or really any combination which you can muster and you can think of. I think that's just insane and it's never been offered from any Eastgate manufacturer in the past. If you purchase a two-wheel drive Atlas, all you'll need to upgrade it to a four-wheel drive is a kit which X-Way will soon be selling. I imagine it will include one drivetrain of your choice with the appropriate truck and motor mounts and also a second electronic speed controller which is plug and play. On top of that, the Atlas is compatible with practically any any street or AT wheel on the market currently. So if you've been in the game for a while like I have and you've accumulated a large collection of your favorite wheels, you're in luck. Just on the X-Ray website, you can purchase the Atlas with six or seven inch tires for on-road or off-road, as well as 12 street and cloud wheel configurations. Personally, I'm most excited to try the new 115 millimeter rubber 
wheels. Those are all the tangible changes, but beyond that, because of X-Way's ESC and smart capabilities, you can also change exactly how the board performs in terms of acceleration and braking in each gear. With all of this modularity and adjustability, paired with the DKP trucks, you can literally make the Atlas the perfect electric skateboard for you and make it respond exactly how you want it to. The only thing you can't change really is the stiffness of the carbon deck, but more on this later. This leads us nicely onto ride feel. X-Way is a brand which understands how to make a solid electric skateboard, which is a joy to ride. Their own CEO, Vic, is a downhill skater, and unlike other eScape brand CEOs, he knows how to shred his boards. That should give you confidence that X-Way are well aware of what it takes to create a reliable board. And from riding their Flex, Atlas, and X1 Pro boards, I can say hands down that they didn't just Frankenstein various skateboard parts and electronics together. The engineers really took time to refine every Every aspect of the board and ensure that each component works efficiently with the next. The result for me, the end rider, is an amazing riding feel. Oftentimes the feel of an electric skateboard is overlooked in reviews and most of the focus rests with the performance. In my view, performance and specs are useless if the board feels horrible, cheap and unreliable to ride. I'm glad to share that as well as providing impressive specs, the Atlas feels great to ride. I've been riding boards with DKP trucks for four years, but I've never felt as good carving as I have on the Atlas. Carving is super responsive and smooth and at the same time if I gun the throttle the board remains super stable and I have full confidence to push my boundaries. The acceleration and braking is really dependable and consistent. The wideness of the deck combined with the subtle drop down and concave and shock absorbing grip tape allows you to feel super planted and the customization options not only from additional accessories but also from the app let you dial in your perfect ride. As with previous X-Way boards, the firmware on the Atlas can be updated. That means that further improvements can be made to the Atlas post-purchase over the air, such as for improved acceleration and braking performance and other performance-related updates, just as X-Way have released with their previous boards. One unique feature for the four-wheel drive Atlas is tank mode. This will essentially configure the motors on your board so it can do infinite donuts. To get into this mode, just tap the mode button on the remote four times quickly. So to get the elephant in the room out the way, no, you can't stand on the Atlas while tank mode is engaged. That means that tank mode isn't really something which you can use in a meaningful way, apart from maybe turning the board around if you've hit a dead end and you don't want to physically lift the board up and turn it around. It is super fun though to have and show off to others, and I'd definitely rather have it than not have it, so why not? You also have the turbo mode, which will unleash the most possible torque out of your Atlas. If you're someone who cares a lot about range, I would probably leave this off most of the time. But if you're power hungry like me, you can toggle it on and keep it on all the time. You also have the same cool features which were available on previous X-Way boards, like the smart on and off feature and standby mode, so you can switch on the board from the remote. And the free mode for braking, where braking turns into a reverse gear. And also of course, cruise control. So with the Atlas board, X-Way also launched a plethora of new accessories, some compatible just with the Atlas and some with all boards. First up is the fenders. I do have friends who aren't the biggest fans of how they look on a skateboard, but I really like them personally. Even if you don't like the look, they do fulfill a few purposes. Firstly, they stop dirt and pebbles from flying up onto your deck and clothes when you're riding off-road. And secondly, they include inbuilt shred lights mounts. If you've been a subscriber for a while, you'll know how much I love of shred lights. They are already so modular, high quality and reliable. So if you already own some, you'll be able to clip them straight into the S-Lock and instantly enjoy safe night riding. Though I would also recommend that you get a shred light SL1000 for your helmet. With the fenders, note that if you have the two wheel drive Atlas, you won't be able to mount them on the front trucks because they need a motor plate to screw onto. You can also purchase one or two motor anti-collision brackets to protect your motors. If you have a four wheel drive Atlas, 
I would strongly recommend you to get the brackets at least for the front of the board because those motors will be really vulnerable and susceptible to serious damage if they hit a wall or something because they're exposed. The brackets are super high quality and durable and I can tell that they'll last a long, long time. Another new accessory for the Atlas is the enclosed belt covers. Now these are gonna be so great for off-road riding. The biggest threat to your belts when off-roading is pebbles, rocks, twigs and dirt etc. They can easily snap your belts and make for a long walk home. The belt covers keep your belts safe from all of that and allow you to just worry about enjoying the ride. You can also get a handle which works with any electric skateboard and mounts directly onto the top of the trucks. This should allow you to pull the Atlas around like a trolley when you're in a supermarket for example. Note that these accessories are all add-ons and do not come stock with the Atlas. But serious question, why should they? When you buy a smartphone, what you get inside the box is the phone, its charger, and maybe some headphones. What you don't get is a phone case and a tempered glass screen protector and a wireless charger. The onus is on you as the customer to purchase these as add-ons. Even the competition to the Atlas sells accessories like the Bash Guard separately. So it really doesn't make sense to expect X-Way to include these accessories as stock with the price. For the most part, X-Way boards are built really well and are extremely reliable. But as with any board with moving components and electronics, there is definitely the possibility that parts can go wrong. The Atlas comes with a one year warranty and I don't think it's a secret that X-Way offer really good customer support to their riders. X-Way have always been exceptional with shipping spare parts to customers and instructing them from their HQ on how to make the repair themselves. This process will work seamlessly with the Atlas because practically every Every part on the Atlas is modular and easily replaceable. But if you're the sort of person who has nightmares about servicing their board, you'll be glad to know that X-Way have service and distribution centers worldwide. As far as I know, that includes three in the US, two in Europe, and one in Australia, with plans for two more soon. There are also many X-Way distributors who already provide direct customer support to their X-Way customers. As an example, a friend of mine, Will, purchased his X1 Pro from a store in the UK called Epic stuff and he's had a stellar customer service experience with them. In fact, X-Way are looking to make all their distributors authorized X-Way service providers. If successful, that would make X-Way support network the largest of any eScape brand currently. I've seen a lot of comments online with people disappointed at the Atlas price. I have to say, I strongly feel the Atlas price is spot on where it is now, even without the discounts. See, to get a more rounded appreciation of the Atlas board and its pricing, it's worth exploring where it positions itself in the eScape market. So the market really is divided into three main categories and more or less every board will fall into one or the other. At the bottom end, we have the budget boards. These include boards like the long boards from Meepo, Wowgo, Onboard, and even the X-Way Flex falls comfortably into this category. These are extremely accessible boards which your average rider will be more than satisfied with in terms of both performance and cost. Then you have the opposite end of the spectrum and that's the boutique boards. These boards generally cost far more, ranging from three to $7,000. Within this category, you'll find brands like Lacroix, Cali NYC and BioBoards. When producing boards, these brands focus on making them the best of the best. Affordability and trying to drastically cut costs is completely out of the question. As such, the vast majority of e-skaters will probably never end up with one of those boards, unless they're really engrossed into this hobby. You also have DIY boards, but we're just talking about production boards here. The final category sits comfortably in the middle, and that's what I call the mid-tier boards. Here, you'll find boards that try to strike happy medium between quality, performance, and price. As well as new e-skaters, they target riders from the budget board category who want an upgrade. Up until now, Evolve skateboards have had this category almost exclusively to themselves and have recently been joined by Onsra. The attention to detail with the Atlas is astounding. From the screw-on charge port cover, to the Loctite for the motor and belt cover screws, to the metal belt covers, it's very clear to me that X-Way took a no expense spared approach with the Atlas, even ironing out 
about small details. Unlike some brands, they weren't trying to cut corners or cut costs with the Atlas. They just made the best possible board which they could and priced it accordingly. With the introduction of the Atlas, X-Ray are about to make a huge mark in the mid-tier market. I think there's a good chance they will surpass Evolve. I've owned an Evolve GTR for two years and in my honest opinion, the Atlas is a far better board. But wait for my comparison video on that one, which by the way, will be totally unbiased with real objective tests and perspectives from my friends. The Atlas is also priced much more competitively and you get so much more bang for your buck. Actually, let's talk about the pricing now. Right now, before discounts, you can get the Atlas two-wheel drive 80 for $1,600. Two-wheel drive two-in-one is $1,740. Four-wheel drive 80 costs $2,200. And four-wheel drive 80 two-in-one is $2,400. Do check out the discount codes in the description to get up to $165 off any Atlas board. From my perspective in the UK, the Atlas ships here with no delivery fee or import duty or additional taxes. The final price that you pay is what you see on the website and that I find super impressive. So of course the Atlas will have the option of hubs and direct drive in the future, but for now the only available option is the Riot motors, i.e. belt drive. Naturally, a belt driven board with four motors attracts double the maintenance of a belt driven board with two motors. In the long run, there will be two more pulleys to worry about, two more pulley bearings and two more belts. That's not a negative per se, it's just something to be aware of. Equally though, four wheel drive does also mean that if you snap a belt, you should be completely fine to still get to where you're going because you've got three other wheels thrusting you forward. The same is the case for if you have a puncture. I wasn't fortunate enough to get a puncture on one of my first rides with the Atlas because in my excitement, I went straight over some sharp glass, but I didn't let that ruin my ride. I still rode the Atlas for a good few miles with Ben filming me. And honestly, because of the incredible traction on the board, I can still ride at a quite decent speed speed and carve well and still feel really stable. That leads us onto another thing to be aware of. If you're getting the Atlas AT, whether with on-road or off-road wheels, they will use inner tubes inside. And that opens up the possibility of having punctures now and again if you ride over sharp objects. Now this isn't a huge deal at all. Every AT electric skateboard on the market worth its salt is using pneumatic tires. It's not a difficult process at all to fix a puncture with the Atlas. It certainly didn't take me a long time to do. You can also use tire sealants like green slime to prevent future punctures and help you stay riding for longer. So unless you've had your head buried in the sand, you'll of course know that the Atlas is a carbon board at least for now. There is though a camp of people who swear by bamboo decks and can never foresee themselves riding anything as stiff as carbon, even with AT wheels. For those people, the current Atlas may not be the perfect board. However, X-Way have in the past teased the prospect of releasing the equivalent of a bamboo Atlas. And by their innovation standards, I really wouldn't be surprised if they made a bamboo board just as refined as the carbon. My guess would be that the bamboo Atlas would also be cheaper than the carbon because the trend in the industry is that carbon boards cost more to make and therefore cost more for the end consumer. So guys, I do pride myself on giving genuine and honest reviews. So far with this board, there's really only two potential negatives that I could draw your attention to, but neither of these are really a deal breaker for me. The first thing is the weight. So this isn't gonna be such an apparent negative with the two wheel drive Atlas, but certainly for the four wheel drive, especially with 80 wheels, the overall weight of the board makes it less than desirable to carry around. So my board comes in at 14 kilograms or 31 pounds. And even at my weight, of 120 kilograms, the board does feel heavy to pick up. If you're a lightweight rider, you may struggle with carrying the board more than me. Thankfully, x sell a very cheap handle that attaches onto the Atlas trucks and lets you haul the board around like a suitcase. I have tried to do this with the anti-collision bracket, but the finger placement is just really awkward and uncomfortable. If you do need to pick up the board though, like to carry it up some stairs, just know that it's not a light board by any means. Another alternative, if you know you'll need to carry the board around a lot for commuting, is to get yourself 
and Eskip backpack like the Ultra Bag, which I highly rate. The latest native Ultra Bag features chest and stomach straps to take the weight of the board off your shoulders. The board will still feel heavy, but at least the weight is much better distributed across your body versus just under one arm. The second negative is really negligible, but I do like to cover everything, so I'll mention it anyway. I would love to have seen your remote charge with USB-C as opposed to micro USB. Although I do have a lot of micro USB accessories still, slowly all of my camera gear and gadgets are transforming to USB so uniformity in charging cables would be a big bonus for me. I don't see why X-Ray can't release a newer remote somewhere down the line to change this. Apart from that, I really struggle to critique anything else about the Atlas. It's just a really solid board. I'm not gonna mention the price here because personally, I think the price is spot on for the quality of the board you're getting from X-Ray here. If you've been following my journey on this channel, you'll have seen my progression from loving the GTR to saying in my two year GTR review that I really wished it offered more performance. In short, here are the criticisms I had of the Evolve GTR after two years, and here is whether the Atlas overcame them or not. Honestly, the Atlas four wheel drive has been the answer to my prayers. Compared with the GTR, the Atlas is talkier, faster, better looking, more enjoyable to ride, packs more features, is more modular, has a better remote, a more reliable ESC, a better app, and even at the moment in the UK is cheaper. Without discounts, the Atlas four wheel drive comes in at 1,584 pounds, and the Carbon GTR with standard battery comes in at 1,700 pounds. The difference with the Atlas two wheel drive, which also outperforms the GTR, is even bigger. Without discounts, that board costs 1,150 pounds. I think if someone is deciding between the Atlas and a Carbon GTR, they'd be very silly not to choose the Atlas. If you want to see a full GTR versus Atlas comparison video, smash the like button and let me know down in the comments section below. I know some people want me to compare the Atlas to boards from brands like Lyocon, but the fact is that I've never heard of that brand in the UK and I've been to group rides up and down the country for years and never seen a Lyocon board before. The GTR for me is a much more sensible comparison. If Batman had a skateboard, it would be the Atlas four wheel drive. At the moment, the Atlas is my seventh electric skateboard board and it's definitely my favorite board to ride and also my favorite board on the market. But whether or not it's the right board for you is a decision that you ultimately need to make based on your own needs and your own merits. I think the Atlas board is an investment. Usually when you buy a new board, you love it at the start, but then outgrow it and want to trade it for another. Because the Atlas is so modular, it will be much harder to outgrow it. If you get bored of right drive motors, for instance, you can switch them to direct drive or hub motors, bored of AT wheels, switch to street wheels and so on and so forth. If you want to just get your hands on an electric skateboard, which will cover you in any situation like street, AT, two wheel drive, four wheel drive, speed, torque, modularity, then this board is gonna be one of your best options. If you're power hungry and want as much torque as possible, go for the four wheel drive. If you don't need all the power and would prefer more range, go for the two wheel drive. I really like that X-Ray have entered the two in one AT electric skateboard space. With the launch of the Atlas, they now have the full lineup of boards. Short boards, flexible and stiff long boards, both with standard trucks and now DKP trucks and an AT board. So they now have something to offer every type of rider. If you're planning to buy an Atlas, please use my discount code AMAR. As well as saving you money, it does help out the channel a lot and I really appreciate it in advance. Guys, before I sign off, I wanna tell you that this video has taken me the best part of 45 hours to plan, film and edit. So if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. It would really mean so much to me. Soon, I'll be releasing a tutorial on how to switch from AT to Street on the Atlas, as well as my Shredlight SL1000 review and my X-Ray Flex review and I'm super pumped to be bringing all these videos to you. I hope you're all staying safe wherever you are in the world. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.